And therefore, my office here in Kenya is one of those offices God has given by grace. And I prayed for a whole year. And when things were very tough during the elections, I spoke to God and I told him, Lord, I don't want to go to that office because I'm going to get status. I don't want you to make my husband and the president become president because of status. I want you to give us that office for revival to break through. To give up first a platform where we can be able to advance the gospel. And therefore this office, when I came in, we started with things which are not particularly very big, but they are major in the agenda of God. So we have four pillars, and one of them is the Boy Child Program. The Boy Child Program is a program that is very dear to me now, and I decided to champion the Boy Child Program because it is important for any woman of purpose to understand the final analysis and the conclusion of this satanic agenda shall be done by the woman and her seed. And for that reason, I decided to champion the agenda of the boy child because when the boy child is put outside the destiny God has created, then there's not going to be generations, regeneration, reproduction, and there is not going to be any victory without him. He is the seed carrier. And as you may know, a seed, anything that has seed will produce. And from the very beginning, God himself decided to give trees with seed, and it would produce after its own kind. And now we have <laughs> human race that has forgotten that without a seed, you produce nothing. And therefore, I saw how they are drunken and they are in the streets, dark and greasy, outside they are drunk and without direction, involved in alcohol abuse and all manner of rejection that has been met on the boy child now for a very long time. And I realized the satanic agenda has always been set and it goes right to destroy the boy child. And every time you see them dying in numbers from one a source, then you must know satanic agenda is in play. And if you do not do something about it, then things are going to go wrong. And who is better placed to do that than a mother? And so I've risen as a mother to be able to defend the future generations and to bring back the boy to his dreams, his vision, and align him with the agenda of God. And that is why that is one of the pillars. The other pillar is the widows and the orphans who we are empowering and seeing that they go to school, resocializing the widow and making sure that the widow does not become a beggar or a, an object that people need to put sympathy on. But a woman who we know, she just lost her husband. And when she loses her husband, it is the community and the society's responsibility to make sure that the widow is taken care of and she's given her status and her position and dignified and made to uh, empowered enough to be able to take care of her children and to live a decent life. The other one is the um, people living with disabilities. We find that in the community of, uh, in many communities, and especially here, I'll talk much more about Kenya because that's where I live. There has been 
um, an era where many of these young, uh, young and old and people who are living with disability are looked down upon and we think that maybe it's a curse or even it's witchcraft and all that. And therefore, when you give birth to a special child like that, we do not take good care of them. You are ashamed to have that child with you and they are hidden in homes and sometimes they don't access education and they are not in any way able to access to facilities that they ought to do, the health care and all that. And therefore I decided to become their voice and their advocate and to go look for them and sensitize their parents and the communities that these are important people in our society and they concern God. The fourth pillar is chaplaincy, outreach, and the family values. Whenever you are going to find anyone who the society does not want, whether it's a child who they want to throw away, all people living with disability, or even that orphan and the widow, the place where they can be cared for and loved is the church. Or even the mosque, or even the temple. It is the place of religion that you will find that they find care. And therefore, we are doing this work that I'm doing together with the clergy of Kenya and beyond. And therefore, as a woman, as I said, we must find the place of purpose. And for you to know the reason that you exist is very important. And I believe this is a cause I, uh, I was born and I believe it is a cause I can die for. And therefore I know by the way God named the woman, it is the woman who ought to stand and change communities and especially when she rises as a mother because when they were created they were both called Adam and that is Genesis 5 verse 1 to 2 God did not call the woman these other names in Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 it reads and says this is a written account of Adam's family line when God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and named them mankind or Adam. And therefore, when we were created, we were both called Adam or mankind. And therefore, mankind must be humane. Mankind must rise and make sure that they are taking care and making sure that what God created is being taken care of. And that is why, as a woman, I feel in the, in the times in Kenya, I need to rise as a mother. And when she messed it in the, in the, in the Garden of Eden, it was she who God pointed to fix it. So, as, because we messed it there, and now there is a mess in the world, God is still waiting for the woman to fix it. Because she say, he said in the book of Genesis that he has made an enmity between the woman and her seed and the Satan and his seed. And if you check throughout history, God will, uh, God will always speak to the woman, waiting for her to do what she's supposed to do. And she, will, she, will, she has a sense, and she can know and sense the time and the season for her to be able to rise up and do what she must do. Because woman is also the mother of all that is living, and that is what uh, the Bible tells us. So the names of the woman, as I see them, explains my destiny, explains my purpose. Because when I was called Adam, I was given the place to be in control and make sure humanity exists in a dignified way. And that is actually what drives my vision. A dignified future for vulnerable populations. That is my vision. 